Well, hello everybody. My name's Ian. We're back in the shed. We've uh, we've done the bit in the attic. Right. So, just to recap, my particular house has a water central heating storage heating system. Right. And the flow of water is contained by a ball valve. The washer had perished in the ball in the ball valve and caused me overflow the tank to fill up the overflow to leak outside which I found and as you watched a video a couple of videos back I went and bought new parts and in this video I fitted them I don't show you fitted them it's just a couple of spanners tick it out spanner back up got some good advice from a lot of youtubers on and people sending me links as to what part to buy replacement parts that are better than I was using so I thank everyone for that Low for Sheffield a few other people uh, I won't mention here uh, right now then we'll carry on I'm in the attic I've just done a job I've found a few curios I'll share that with you hey why does plumbing take up so many tools and space oh Okay, uh, we have now changed that ball valve for a quarter lead. A full bore, quarter turn on off valve. Uh, thank you to Loafer Sheffield for that suggestion. Uh, we've, we've got a nice shiny new, shiny new fitting in there. Uh, the ball floating just nicely okay. whilst I'm up here I really need to do another little job and that's to use this big spanner and box immersion heater spanner and change the immersion heater which is a backup electric hot water heating system uh, for this one I've already pre-wired it, it's probably weren't a good idea. Uh, I'll explain why downstairs in the garage when I've done this. Okay, well, it's a, it's a two-handed affair, so I couldn't show you me place that. But basically, that big spanner goes over there, unscrews it, and you put the other one in, clean the threads up, put the new fibre washer on and tighten it back up but not too tight because this is a copper cylinder and you can twist the neck all I've got to do now is to do some wiring I think it's dead it's deeded deeded deaded but whilst I was doing that put my hand on here or my elbow, put my elbow on there, I thought, what's that? I uh, just need to fill the tank and see if we're, uh, if I've done it proper. What have I got in here? Because it felt strange. Coins! Oh, lots of coins. Whoa, lots of silver coins. coins. God, I forgot I've got these. I have forgotten all about them. That's what you get when you're, when you're a hoarder. So, the sixpences. Oh, we'll try this a different way. Put it on something uh, that. Focus. Oh, is that Edward? That looks like Edward. And eight. Nineteen forty-eight. Well, I can see a few Edwards sixpences in there. Whoa, focus. That's not a sixpence. That is a, what's that say? Focus, focus. Two cent, 
centissimo, two centissimo, not got a clue. Centissimo sounds Spanish. Anyone help me on this? What is this coin? Where is it coming from? Anyway, we're digressing. That doesn't get me uh, my plumbing done, does it? So I'll tidy up here. See you downstairs, and we will talk about this. Right, I've got all my paraphernalia together. Uh, I have a spur one, so this won't catch me out again. I've got a spur ball as well. Right, just up there and behind there was some piece of paper, newspaper stuffed in. So I'll pull that out, because uh, it intrigues me this. Well, first of all, let's have a look at the date. Uh, focus. Page 64, Sunday Mirror, September the 13th, 1998. Wow. Uh, obviously, it was just, uh, I don't know, padding. And I read this one, which I liked. Bomb pensioner refu refuses to budge. An old soldier, John Robinson, said, uh, I'm not moving. They found a big bomb at the bottom of his garden, a 500-pound bomb, which had lain buried in his garden for 57 years. John, aged 83, and that was uh, in 1998, said, I'm not moving. I never ran when the bombs were falling around me during the war, so I should have moved now. Uh, uh, and they just blew it up uh, in, uh, in the in near Gloucestershire. Put all the tools put away now, and I thought we'd have a look at this this old ball valve, float valve. Hey, for those of you who are a little unfamiliar about what they do, you know it it sits in a tank of a uh, big tank, and water goes in that way and comes out. That way that arm has that big ball on the end which floats in the water uh, as it moves up swivels on this point there's a washer inside which it closes and uh, seals off the water coming in so I'll take that apart and show you the bits the split pin which I've pulled through holds the arm in place you take the arm off you can see it's on some sort of pivot point uh, I need to get that end cap off that righty right lefty loosey righty tighty there we go so as you can see there's a slot in there that fits in that slot and as it and it and it pivots it in in and out and we need that next bit out that was, that was quite stiff that but we've we've got it loose right so the water comes through there Okay. It's funneled through that little plastic washer. That moves up and down. As I said, and presses against that, closing it off. Focus. Look at the state of that washer. That is like to, supposed to be like solid. So you can buy replacement washers, but sometimes you find that as you're bending these back, they come brittle and they snap off, and then you're knackered. So for the price of a new complete system, which I think only cost me £4.49, I think, uh, it's better off putting new in. On the older models, that is actually made out of brass itself. So, got a bit of brass to weigh in. And that uh, is what caused me a leak.
or it caused me water to continually dribble in because that wasn't sealing that off so well in fact you can see it's actually worn a hole through through it that's supposed to be solid so there we go one job done right so that was it that's the ball valve very simple affair uh, caused me a bit of grief I didn't get a flood as such and I got a little brass out of it as well okay I said I'd talk about this uh, it's not a trombone an immersion eater a bigger version of what you would have in your electric kettle okay so I said in the attic we have a we have a a coil that runs inside of that big yellow tank that's heated with hot water surrounded by cold water and therefore it will heat the cold water up as a backup we have this immersion heater Immer immersion emerged immersed immersed right so if you don't want to put the central heater on maybe it's in summer but you want some hot water you can just flick the switch and it's just like switching a big kettle on okay i was in the attic i turned the pressure down on the water so it wouldn't fill the tank as fast and give me hopefully a couple of days before it started to overflow again to get the parts I've turned the water down a little bit too much so I was in the attic weighing the job up my daughter was in the shower the next thing I get a shout dad there's no water coming out the, sh out the shower so I'd obviously turned the pressure too down way too down and the cylinder had emptied and the header tank that fills the cylinder had also emptied I practically turned it off so no problem turn the switch fill the tank up that filled the cylinder up obviously filled it up full of cold water so here was the moment where I shout to the wife switch the immersion heater on 10 minutes later the water will be hot she can finish her shower so I was up there I'm not always up there by the way uh, I heard her switch the immersion on and in the corner of my eye I saw a blue spark and I thought well I shouldn't have a blue spark so so I had a, one of these neon electrical screwdrivers where if you touch the end and you touch the life part a little neon bulb inside will glow to say you've got electricity flow into that point okay so I went over uh, what you've got here I said you've got the heating element you've got a thermostat it says on the top there it's preset I don't know, 65 70 degrees this particular model also has a little reset switch there with the red end so if it gets too hot it'll pop up and cut the power off so with it working I touch that side no power so I thought okay so the reset button has popped up press the reset button down touch the other side and I've got power power on both sides but as I was watching this actual reset switch in there I don't know if you can see very well but at the base of this it started to glow red tiny little red dot grew brighter as, as time passed up time and I mean short time started glowing very red and then as you can see there possibly yep the cable started to melt you can see it, all the brown has melted off and I think from that side you get a better picture that 
it's actually melted. So I was unfortunate that I had an overflow leak, but fortunate that it happened, because otherwise I would have been in the attic when this would have happened, and it could quite easily have set fire. I'm not too sure, because it is protected by a fuse, and it ought to, as it drawed more and more current, it ought to have blown the fuse and cut the power off. I don't know. I didn't let it go that far. So, uh, that's why I've had to change this. All right, so there we go, folks. A little bit of uh, home maintenance done. Uh Never knows. Could have been worse. Could have been a lot worse. See you soon.